In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use player press to save transforms. So first we're going to create a new script and I'm going to name mine player press JTA. You can call it whatever you want, but it's best to put player press in the name for a better workflow. Then we're going to go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this mono behavior and we're going to change it from a public class to a public static class. Now in Unity, classes without mono behaviors are pretty much static classes anyway, so you actually don't need this, but it's a good habit to get into for programmers. Next, we're going to get rid of our start and update functions, and we're going to say public static void set vector2. This will help us later on when we tackle the transforms. And then in the parameters, we're going to feed it a string key, and then we're going to say comma vector2, and we're going to call it val. Then in the curly brackets, we're going to say string x is equal to key plus quotations v2x. And beneath that, we're going to do the same thing, except it's going to be string y, and then it's going to be v2y. Getting into player press, we're going to say player press dot set float and we'll feed it x the string and then we're going to make this float equal to val dot x. Then we'll do the same thing for y. Then we'll make a public static vector2 and we're going to call it get vector2. And then we're going to feed it a string parameter called key. In the curly brackets, we're going to create a new vector2 called val and this is just so we have a return value. And we can go ahead and copy and paste the two string lines in the previous method, paste them in. We won't have to change anything about them, but then we'll go beneath that and we'll type out val.x equals playerpress.getfloatx. Then val.y equals playerpress.getfloaty. Now we'll go ahead and say return val, which will finally get rid of the squiggly line under our method name. Go ahead and save that, and then let's set this up. In order to do that, we're gonna have to create a new script and we'll just call it player. And for this example, we're gonna put it on this cube object. Go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. And since this will serve mostly as a placeholder, we're gonna get rid of the start and update functions. And we'll replace them with a public vector two and then a public vector three, which we'll be using later. Save that and we'll go ahead and create one more script. This one we're just gonna call save load. Once we have that opened up in Visual Studio, we're gonna get rid of the start method and we'll replace it with a public player and we'll call it player. And in the update method, we're going to say if input dot get key down key code s for save, then player press jta dot set vector two, and we'll set the key as player v two, and we'll say comma player dot vector two. Then beneath that, we'll say if input dot get key down key code l for load player dot vector two is equal to player press dot get vector two, and we'll use the same key as player v two. Go ahead and save that, and then we'll head back into Unity. Then we'll go ahead and put our save load script onto our game manager and drag and drop in our cube as the player. Then we'll go ahead and test this out in play mode. Once we have this opened up, we're going to go ahead and adjust the vector 2, make it something like x equals 2 and y equals 5, click S to save that, exit play mode, and then re-enter play mode, and go ahead and hit L, and there you go. Let's go back into our player press and copy and paste this for vector 3 methods. Change the names from set vector two to set vector three. Make sure to change the vector two parameter as well, and get vector two to get vector three. Change the latter method to a public static vector three as well. Finally, change the vector two val to vector three val. Then we'll go ahead and copy and paste the string y, and we'll make it equal to key plus v three z. Change all the other ones to v three as well. Also, make sure the last string is named z. After that, we'll copy and paste the last player press statement to set float z and we'll make it equal to val.z. Then we're gonna copy and paste the three strings in the set vector three over the get vector three strings. And then beneath our player press, we'll say val.z is equal to player press dot get float z. Save that and go into our save load script, copy and paste this statement. And we actually only need to change it to set vector three. We can even leave the name to be the same. And then change player dot vector two to player dot vector three and then in load, copy and paste that as well, and again change the vector 2s to vector 3s, except in the key parameter. We'll go ahead and save that and head back into the editor. We're going to go into play mode, and we're going to adjust the player's vector 2 and vector 3. We're going to make the first x equal to 2, and the first y equal to 4, and then for the vector 3x, we'll make that equal to 6, the y 5, and the z 8. These are just some random numbers. Save that, exit play mode, go back in, hit L, and everything looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and head back into our player prev script. We're going to copy and paste both of the vector three methods. Starting with our first new method, we're going to change its name to set transform, change the vector three to a transform as well. And then we're going to change the string x, y, and z to instead be 
P, R, and S for position, rotation, and scale. Then for the quotations, we're going to change it to T, P, T, R, and T, S. Now instead of accessing player press or even player press JTA, because we're already in the script, we can actually just say set vector 3 P to val.local position. Go ahead and copy and paste that over the other two lines and change P for R and then P for S. Then it's going to be val.local Eulerian angles for the rotation and val.local scale for the scale. You'll notice for the other set methods, we had variables inside of them. We can't actually do that for a transform because it requires a game object. And because this is not a mono behavior, there isn't an instance of the script inside of our game, so there won't be a game object. There is a workaround to this, but it ends up being overly complicated and causing data leakage. So instead of saying public static and then the component, we're going to say public static void get transform. And we're actually going to make this almost identical to the set transform. Because after our key, we're going to say comma transform val. Then we're going to go up to the top and we're going to make a public static transform, call it transform holder. Now this is going to be empty until we call it inside of our method. Using the transform val that we just created, we're going to say transform holder is equal to val. Now I'll show you why that works in a second. But first we're going to copy all our string values from set transform and paste them into get transform over the other strings. We're going to get rid of these three little lines beneath it. And we're going to change it to transform holder dot local position is equal to get vector 3 p copy and paste that two times change the second p to r and the third p to s instead of local position for the second one we want it to be local Euler angles and instead of local position for the third one we want it to be local scale now we can get rid of return val and we're just going to make it transform holder equals null just to keep it clean now we're almost done just go ahead and save that head back into our save load script and let's call this method and let's say player prefs jta set transform and give it the key of player transform comma player dot transform and what's great about this new way of doing it is we actually can just copy and paste everything and just change the set transform to a get transform and it'll work fine go ahead and save that and we're ready to test this out now let's go into play mode and we're just going to mess with this transform just make it something ridiculous and super obvious all right once that's done Let's go ahead and save that, exit play mode, load that back up, and hit load. And there you have it. Everything works perfectly fine. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions. We try to answer as many as we can, and we'll see you next time.